All right, today I'm going to discuss this trigonometry function question with you. This is the solving part and I find this question is a little bit hard so I decided to make one video to show you how to do this kind of questions. Uh, you, yeah, you can see a lot of double angle over here. The question is 1 minus cos 2 theta plus sine 2 theta over 1 plus cos 2 theta. All right, so of course double angle, you should have a double angle formula over here. So I just write down first in case later we need to use it. So cos 2 theta basically over here, uh, uh, cos 2 theta you have three choice, but over here I think I will use the cos square theta minus sine square theta. Of course you can use another two more choice, you just need to change one or two extra step in order to solve it. Sine 2 theta you only have one choice which is straightforward, 2 sine theta cos theta. Right, so I'm going to use this two formula later uh, for this one. But before I apply this two formula into it, I think I just simplify it first. So the first thing is I will move the one plus cos two theta to the other side. It's going to multiply with six here. So I will have one minus cos two theta plus sine two theta equals to six plus six cos two theta. Alright, so and then I see you have, I have 6 cos 2 theta here and then I have I have cos minus cos 2 theta here. I move to the other side, it's just plus 1, right? So this one will become 7. 6 plus 1, so I will have, I just rewrite this one, 7 cos 2 theta. Then I solve this one and this one. And then, yeah, this one I can leave it here, it doesn't matter. Uh, this is sine 2 theta. And then I have 6 here, right? Minus 1, I have plus 5. Alright, then I, I think it's time to apply my formula into here. Sine 2 theta equals to 2 sine theta cos theta equals to 7. This one is cos square theta minus sine square, right? But because I multiply 7 for both, so it's minus 7 sine square theta plus 5. Right, um, yeah, a lot of students will start over here because you have sine, you have Cause maybe you can try to factorize it. Is it possible we try to factorize this one? Yeah, so yeah, so but what I'm trying to do here is because you factorize is quite hard because you have cos square, sine square, sine cos, and a number. So the easiest way I can think of is you're trying to divide everything by cos square theta. Okay, I will explain this one later. So I divide everything by cos square theta. Okay, why did I choose cos square theta over here? Because cos square and cos square, this one, we can simplify it. Gone already, we just left a minus seven. And this one, cos square and cos, we cut, we just nice, we can get tangent. And this one, sine square over cos square, we can get tangent square here. And then this one, 5 over cos square, this one, if you simplify, we get 5 second square theta, right? And second square is just nice become 1 plus tangent square theta. So therefore, I know second square is related to tangent. So if I divide cos square, here will give me tangent, here will give me number, here will give me tangent square, here will give me another tangent square and number. Then my whole equation will in terms of tangent square, tangent and number then I can factorize. Yeah, so in this question, I think divide cos square, this idea itself is quite, quite hard. There's, there's not all the students can see in this step, you need to divide cos square. Of, of course, if you have any smarter way, please share in the comment below to let me know because this is the way, this is the only way I can think of how to solve this question. All right, so therefore, here I will have two tangent theta equals to seven minus 7 tangent square theta plus I say this is 5 second square right 5 second square second square theta equals to 1 plus tangent square so I time 5 for both so it's 5 plus 5 tangent square theta All right then I'm going to group them together um, minus 7 plus 5 we get negative 2 and then I move to this side become positive 2 positive 2 tangent square theta so we have a plus 2 tangent theta. Um, 7 plus 5 is 12. Move to the other side, minus 12 equals to 0. Uh, I divide 2 for the whole equation. Then I get tangent square theta plus tangent theta 
minus 6 equals to 0. Of course, the next thing I will do is I will try to factorize this one over here. I kind of a block here, but I hope you already copy down. So when I factorize this thing out, so basically I have tangent theta and tangent theta here. And this is negative 6, right? I want to get positive 1 tangent. So this one should be positive 3 minus 2. Right, so over here, I have tangent theta equals to negative 3 or tangent theta equals to 2. Right, then theta will equal to move my tangent to the other side. Will inverse tangent negative 3. Okay, when my inverse tangent negative 3, you learn about trigo. So for negative value, normally I will find my reference angle first. So that's mean when I find my reference angle, right? How to find basically I will do the same thing here, but ignore the negative. This alpha is not my theta, it's a reference angle for me to refer this one to get my correct answer. So what I will do is I will ignore the negative 3 first. So I will do inverse tangent 3. So from here, I should have, the alpha should be 71.57. Okay, 71.57. And then I will analyze myself over here. From S sugar to coffee, tangent will get negative because its tangent is negative 3. Tangent will get negative in, in my second and fourth quadrant. So in order to get the second quadrant, we'll, we will do 180 minus our reference angle. This one is 360 minus our reference angle. Alright, so over here, I will just do 180 minus 71.57 and I get my first answer which is 108.43 and my second answer will be 360 minus 71.57 and which is 288.43. Right, and this one is positive. Positive basically quite straightforward. You just need to move the tangent to the other side, inverse tangent 2, and then you will get the answer easily. So I just inverse tangent 2. I will get 63.43 as my first answer. Because of add sugar to coffee, I know tangent will get positive in the first and third quadrant. First and third. How to get the third quadrant? Basically, it's 180 plus theta, isn't it? So I just use this answer plus another 180. I should get 243.43. Alright, then you should have the full answer. Why I stop here? Because here they actually tell that the angle they want is from 0 to 360. So you can realize my final answer here all is from 0 to 360. I didn't get any negative an angle and I didn't get any angle is more than 360. And something very good about solving part of three goal questions here is, you can always substitute this angle back into the theta and use your calculator to type the answer. That means you substitute any of the four answers into the theta here. You should get the value very, very close to six. Why I say this is very good? Because in the exam, you can always check your answer and make sure your answer is correct before you move on if you have extra time. Right, so for three goal questions, solving part one, Make sure when you got the answer, always substitute back into the theta in order to make sure you get the correct answer. Right, I guess this video is quite long. So that's all for this video. If you have any question, please post in the comment below. I'm going to see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.